a very, very pleasing situation of having a piece of the kill wood running all the way from the forward end all the way back to as far as the cell drive leg. Tony, this is SV Tapatia, and as you may well know, we're building this cruising sailboat, a J. Benford designed 31 foot 8 cruising dory, sailing dory, a junk schooner rigged will be. And uh, as you may also well know, the last few weeks have been all about uh, concentrating on the keel. And uh, judging by one or two comments, um, I get the impression that some of you are not completely clear what's going on with this keel. So. So the big goal of this video is to, is to uh, get some clarity on the keel structure and design. Let's start there. Now, to all intents and purposes, all boats have this curve along the, all sailboats have this curve along the bottom line known as the rocker. There may be one or two exceptions, but they basically all have it. This, this bottom line's curved. And one of the first things for this keel structure was to fit some pieces forward and aft to level that out so that we could finally get a straight piece all the way through and that's where we got to last week with this well, this is the bottom piece here is a long six meter long piece going from the forward end all the way back to just forward of the sail drive leg gives us a flat level surface under there to attach the rest of the keel to and the rest of the keel is going to be made up in the workshop uh, some more keel timber and the ballast keel the lead ballast keel. So I guess one question I should answer is, is why am I doing it like that? Um, because indeed, most boats are built from the keel up. Uh, this is true. But uh, this method is, is not from me. This is following the, the method stipulated by the designer or suggested by the designer. And I support it 100%. It makes total sense. And as Jay Benford says, you know, it allows you to keep the boat lower in the shop as you're building it. And this is, we're in my shop here. It's maybe 10 foot, 12 foot high, 12 foot six, 12 foot high maybe, at the highest point. You know, so the boat had to sit fairly low in here. Um, you see sometimes in boat yards, don't you? You see these multi-story tarpaulin sheds where people are working on their boats. But the beauty of this was it could sit low in here. This, in fact, is the ladder that I used for going up onto the the forward or the aft deck up to the cockpit. You see the height of the thing, it's about five foot high, I suppose. And that was the height of the decks. It was very, very easy to get materials up there uh, and back down again. And when you're building a boat, you're spending a lot of time going up and down onto the boat, back down to get things, to work on things, to machine things, taking them back up again. Um, and it makes it very, very easy. So keeping that low in the shop is, is such an advantage. And uh, yeah, I support that all the way. And then of course, because you've done that, you then fit the keel afterwards, which is where we are. So here we are. And I hope you can recognize this as the <laughs> beautiful drawing of, a, of the outline of a Benford Dory hull, not to scale. Uh, I've got the rudder hung on there. And it was an approximation. And see, we've got this rocker on the bottom. Uh, let's have a sail drive leg coming through there, shall we? There we go, sail drive leg. <laughs> Got this rocker on the bottom. And what we've done so far is we've, we've put in three pieces forward. Coming through here somewhere. Three pieces forwards. One piece at the aft end. Through there somewhere. And then one piece from there Coming all the way through like that. 
So we've got this flat surface underneath. Now clearly the, the boat's a bit shrunk, but um, in terms of length. But that's what we've got on there. And then in the workshop, the task will be to make up some more pieces that fit to that, that come in, should we say, up to, up to here. When it's fitted on there, we'll come in something like that. This is made up of five planks, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, five planks, laminated up, solid wood. There we go. That bit's easy enough. Then we need to make a ballast kill. Ballast kill is I'm approximating where it comes to. It's coming in there. Ballast kill is a great big lump of lead. 1,280 kilos is the designed ballast. That's what we're aiming for, or possibly a fraction more. Um, but in that region. And behind that ballast kill, we've got this comes down a little bit more. Now from here on, these taper down to, a, to give us a sort of an airfoil shape. We've got a curve at the front and a taper there. It gives us a sort of airfoil shape to the entire kill. And then the last piece comes through here, under there, like that. And supports, we've got a, a bronze rudder support shoe, a couple of pin tools on there. Three position support for the rudder, good and solid, ocean worthy. So that's what this is looking like. And this, remember, is lead. The lead is bolted up through the whole lot with, now I've adapted Jay Benford's plans a bit. I'm putting 11 bolts, I'm putting two, I'm putting one, I'm putting two, that's five, I'm putting one, one, seven, two, and two, nine, eleven. Clearly they come down a bit further in the lead than that. They come down there. And they go up through the floor timbers. They're all lined up nicely with the floor timbers. Bronze bolts embedded in the lead, nuts on the top, big washers or some kind of plates to spread the load. And those keel bolts hold the whole thing up together. It's quite possible that I'll embed a bolt in the wood there, and uh, if, where I've got enough meat to get an embedded bolt in, embed a couple of bra bronze bolts in there. Um, and that's what we're doing. As it stands, the leveling out pieces are on, and this week has been working on this wood section here. I hope that's clear. So having roughed out those five boards, the next job was to mark the, uh, the kill bolt holes, uh, which involved taking the uppermost one of those, the longer one of them, uh, out to the boat, fixing it in position underneath and, and drilling through the various holes just to mark the position of those, those bolt holes before we could laminate those five pieces together.
see if we can get that jerked up. Well, a very strange thing happened this week. Something that <laughs> was quite a surprise. A company, uh, this company, Jealous, if that's how you pronounce it, wrote to me and uh, they obviously found my email address. And asked me if I'd like to try one of their tools and give it a review. Let, let me say this straight away. Any tool review I've done up until now has been completely independent. Now, I've get, got nothing from any company anywhere up until this stage. So this is the first time anything like this has ever happened. Weird, but there we go. So the, there had a list of a few tools and I thought the belt sander, most of it was stuff I already had. But, and I've already got a belt sander, but I thought it'd be kind of nice to have another belt sander, a lighter one and one that could be clamped at a bench maybe to use as a bench sander. So they sent me the belt sander and here it is. Well, here's the box. And first thing I'll say is, you know, far from the most important thing, but I think the box is good in that there's no glossy print on it. it looks like the sort of box that could be recycled either. When we open it up, what we've got, of course, unsurprisingly, is a belt sander, a dust bag, a couple of clamps for clamping it to the bench. This is unusual, comes with half a dozen, one belt on the machine and half a dozen spare belts, that's quite something, and a vacuum cleaner attachment, plus the destructions. Um, let's have a look. Well, it's light compared to my Makita, which is a beast of a machine. Let me grab it for you. Here's my Makita. It's, you know, it's a beast of a machine. Weighs a fair old chunk. This one, decided lighter. Um, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to swing it too long with one hand, but it's undeniably lighter. And I've used it a little bit, tried it out. It works. What I couldn't possibly comment on is, is its longevity, of course. It's, um, I've had the thing just over a week now, and it seems fine, but I have no idea how long it'll last. That's anyone's guess. I don't know these things, but trying them, but quite good. Belt release, as you expect, on the lever there. Belt tracking adjustment on the knob there. Speed adjustment on the forward handle. Let me hold up there. One to six, I believe. Doesn't go to 11. And you know, <laughs> the usual button to turn it on with the, with the little lock thing there. Lock it on. 
nothing surprising about it. It comes with, I say, these clamps, so you can clamp it in various positions that you can clamp it from. I suppose you can clamp them, why would you do that? That's the one I use, I use those two there. Clamp it down um, to a bench. I would like, and this isn't this company's fault, but I'd, lo I'd like a belt sander to be able to be clamped like that. And I have had a good look around and I don't see any possibilities to clamp it like that. This is a shame, but you can certainly clamp it like that and use it upside down. And the clamps, you know, seem to be up to the job. Dust bag is uh, rudimentary. But I suppose the vacuum cleaner attachment will be better if you're keeping the dust down. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Jealous belt sander. They have a few other tools. They've got an orbital sander that looks like a copy of the Dewalt that I have. Um, what can you say about it? It sands. So I've plugged it in now and uh, let's give it a spin. Quite a breeze comes out of the motor um, from the airflow, the cooling flow through the, through the motor. If we compare it to the Makita. This, the Makita, the air comes out the sides there, this one comes out that way. Surprisingly, the Makita's quieter. I suspect these are quite a bit cheaper and will probably do the job. Swinging door catch. Quite nice. Quick hand sand.
And here it is in all its glory. Five fairly heavy duty Douglas fir boards, laminated up, epoxy glued, thorough epoxy gluing job, wetting out the surface and then putting some thickened glue, epoxy glue in there, clamped together. And uh, next job will be to fair it up, to clean it up, got a few dribbles there, well, a lot of dribbles. <laughs> clean it up, fair it, put a filler here and there if necessary. Drill the kill bolt holes through, all the way through. And then that will be that one done. Cut this, cut this, obviously it's a steady angle and later it is shaped to, a, to an airfoil leading edge shape. Um, I should do that when I've got the ballast kill cast and make sure they match. But uh, there it is, that bit didn't take very long. And I hope that has brought some clarity to the keel. That's it for now, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. It all helps, I believe, in the old YouTube algorithm. Um, or if you'd like to go that extra mile over on Patreon, we have three tiers of support. Uh, get over there and have a look. It's also due a behind the scenes video. Let's get on with it. Um, we'll be back. See you next time. Bye.